Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, February 21st, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. A free press is also essential for our democracy. Our freedom as a nation rests on our freedom of the press. Obama publicly claims he's all about the freedom of press, but his administration wants the FCC to monitor newsrooms. Meanwhile, the politics of late night television infiltrate the mainstream. And riot police in the Ukraine sew up a protester's mouth with thread. All that and more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. This, this is a radical new era of tyranny for the White House. I can't imagine it getting to first base. That was Judge Andrew Napolitano speaking about the Obama administration's latest efforts to have the feds come and police newsrooms. That's right, Mr. Obama, who is constantly saying how important a free press is to freedom and democracy, well, in his typical doublespeak fashion, the White House ordered the FCC to go in and monitor how newsrooms are reporting their news, which of course is an absolute affront to the First Amendment. <laughs> Basically, you know, with this new proposal, editors and broadcasters would worry about covering certain issues due to fear of any government retribution, because, of course, you have to have certain licenses by the FCC in order to air. And Napolitano was saying that, you know, we're basically going to be afraid to express ourselves fully because federal agents are going to be looking over your shoulder. And then, of course, he did caution that this idea could could take on because it's going to initially be introduced as a voluntary situation. But then he added that nothing is voluntary with the government. Now, the FCC claims that content won't be moderated by the feds, although the actual proposal document does refer to the influencing of philosophy and viewpoint. Now, as of the time of this broadcast, the FCC has taken a step back. They said they're not going to send anyone to the newsrooms for now. But can you just imagine how much more propaganda would be coming out of the mainstream media? They already get their talking points straight from the White House anyway, and anyone who kind of dares step over the line, now they're basically being warned and threatened that they're going to be monitored to make sure that they can comply with Obama's agenda. Now, it's obvious that this is going to be sent out to target organizations that are critical of the Obama administration, any kind of conservative media outlets, just like they targeted the Tea Party years with the IRS, and much like they fired Jay Leno. He was one of the only late night talk shows where the GOP felt they had a welcome mat rolled out for them. And here, you know, Jay Leno was at the top of his game. It definitely wasn't his ratings. He was just canned and replaced with Jimmy Fallon, who makes no bones about being an Obama supporter. He's the guy who had Obama doing slow jams with Jimmy Fallon. And now this week, his first week airing, he has Michelle Obama uh, rolls out Miss Obama, who he says, you know, they have great chemistry to make jokes about Obamacare and stuff. So, of course, this is just basically changing the political landscape for late night TV. Leno, who wrote all of his own jokes, was just a little too much, got a little, you know, made a little too much fun of Obama and his politics and Obamacare. He'll be replaced now with Jimmy Fallon. So this, of course, is just more proof of how this liberal agenda is going to be shoved down your throats no matter what. He's going to push his agenda, and if you are one of those people who just refuses to peel your eyes away from the mainstream media and whatever it is they flash in front of you, then you're basically just going to kind of be duped by this whole scheme. But maybe the FCC can get in and help uh, coach Piers Morgan on his ratings. <laughs> his anti-gun stance is probably the only reason why he is still on the air, of course, because he's pushing the Obama administration's gun control agenda. But it's certainly not his ratings. Variety reports that since gun control has become a frequent topic on Piers Morgan's show, his ratings, which were never that great anyway, to be sure, have plummeted. Now they're falling below the 300,000 mark multiple times already this year. But Piers, Alex Jones told you, you're not going to take our guns. And now that you're continually pushing this anti-gun stance, 
your ratings are plummeting. You got that, your red coat? I mean, you're not gonna come here and convince Americans to give up their guns. It just doesn't even make sense. And do you really think that now, I mean, looking at what's going on in the Ukraine, do you really think that it's absurd to think that the people might at some point need to take out a corrupt government? You know, you kind of made a little joke about that, but here, I mean, just tell that to the uh, protesters in Kiev who have had to take up arms, basically. They've done whatever they could, makeshift weaponry to take out their uh, um, people that are in power there. And now they're basically being told that if they don't play ball with the globalists, they're gonna be killed. You're so, so, you're so I hope, so I hope so that I am wrong. You don't that you have wrong. You have the army, so you will all be dead. That was the Polish minister telling the Ukrainian protest leader that if they didn't go ahead and sign this agreement to uh, end the occupation of Independence Square in Kiev, that martial law would be enacted and everyone would be killed. Now, in a Twitter post, Sikorsky characterized a deal reached between the demonstrators and the Ukrainian government as a good compromise for Ukraine, gives peace a chance, opens the way for reform, and to Europe, Poland and EU support it. The deal includes a pledge by the Ukrainian president to hold elections and a promise to include the opposition in a new government. Now, according to the German government, leaders of the Maiden movement have agreed to sign this agreement. Now, these are, of course, the same sort of words that were uttered by George W. Bush right before he threatened America with martial law if we didn't sign over trillions of dollars to the globalists, to the big banksters. And then now we, of course, see how, how that has fared for all of us. We haven't been repaid and our children's children are in debt and we continue on the downward spiral. Meanwhile, the U.S. government has admitted to supporting this Ukrainian protest by giving them $5 billion to get this little revolution going. And how are the protesters faring there? Well, the International Business Times reports that a protester was admitted to the hospital after having his mouth sewn shut with a shoemaker's thread by the riot police. That is, oh, it's just a disgusting visual there. But other reports of extreme torture have emerged out of Kiev I mean, this is real tyranny these people are dealing with. They've got actual snipers taking out protesters there in Independence Square. I mean, this is what tyranny looks like, folks. But as bad as all of this is looking for the people that are just fighting for their freedom, they have really shown us here in America just how powerful the people can be when they stand up. I mean, before some of the protesters broke into the armory and got actual weapons, they were using makeshift weaponry, bats and clubs and trebuchets and slingshots. And look at how far they were able to go. They took an agreement all the way to the government. They demanded some action. And this is why your government wants to take your guns from you, America. This is why your local police force looks like they're gearing up for war with Iraq. because. They know how powerful we, the people, are. They know that if we just organize, if we get together, if we demand that it's time to throw out this corrupt government, when we rise up and we will, we will win. Now, coming up after the break, we'll tell you just about one of these elected officials that's breaking all the laws he's making for you. Introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. 
Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Well, this story is about Mayor Do As I Say, Not As I Do de Blasio. The mayor's caravan was caught on camera committing multiple traffic violations just days after he announced his really aggressive plan to crack down on traffic violations. Thursday, the mayor's two-car caravan was seen speeding, blowing through stop signs, and violating other traffic laws that would have equaled a license suspension for the average man. The grand total for all of the violations de Blasio's caravan committed uh, was 13. So it only takes about 11 points for a person to get their license suspended. Now the mayor announced his 62-point Safe Streets initiative, which includes lowering the speed limit to 25 miles per hour. Meanwhile, his caravan was caught going 45 miles per hour. He said, we want the public to know that we are holding ourselves to this standard, right, by blowing through stop signs and going 30, 40 miles over the speed limit. Now, the NYPD released a statement suggesting that the traffic procedures by the mayor's security detail may have been necessary. You know, the police department personnel that are assigned to the mayor's security detail receive specialized training in driving based on maintaining security as well as safety. Right. See, it's okay when they do it. It's all right for Bloomberg to have the guns, but you can't have the guns. I mean, you don't need them. And then later that day or earlier on his way to the gym, de Blasio was caught jaywalking. A reporter was trying to talk to him about breaking all these traffic violations. And he was like, I got to go to the gym as he's on his cell phone jaywalking. So just proof the laws are not meant for them. I mean, granted, wasn't he just an average citizen before he was elected mayor? Mm, I don't know, probably always a criminal. But the laws are for the slaves. He sure didn't get treated like this young lady on UT Austin campus. A photographer caught the exact moment that she was grabbed by cops for jaywalking and failure to identify. The witness said that he saw she was just crossing the road with earbuds in her ears and didn't hear the cops calling out for her. How dare that slave think that she can just jog and not obey the orders. Now this girl weighs no more than a buck 20, but it took four big burly police officers to arrest her and make an example out of her. And here she's pleading saying, I was just jogging. I wasn't doing anything wrong. And the, the police, the UT Austin police said that there was no initiative to crack down on jaywalking. So for whatever reason, they decided to get really aggressive with this girl. But this is, of course, just one more example of how this police state apparatus is encroaching into our everyday lives. Everything we do now is thought crime or can get us ticketed or arrested. Here, the girl she was running and she was grabbed from behind, from the side by the cops. And so she jerked away and that's where the cops were saying she was resisting. And I mean, being a female, if I'm jogging and someone grabs me, I'm going to run faster. Or